Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Batman the Animated Series, Shadow of the Bat. At this point, we have gone through part of a round in the game, and that happened in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description or by clicking the eye up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as we play through the rest of this game, and that lets me put corrections on the screen, which makes this as accurate a video as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, we are still in the first battle phase of the game, and Batgirl, Robin, and Jim Gordon have not activated. Now, I think we should have Robin activate next, and let's have him start by doing a move action. Now, as you can see, Robin gets four movement points with that move icon, and with that, let's have him go one, two, three, four. Well, at this point, Robin is now one, two, three move spaces away from this crusher right here, and it's now time for him to do ranged attacks. Now, if you remember from the tutorial, every space in excess of two that the target is away from the attacker, the attack will lose one damage. However, the Robin player decided to use the sling skill for this entire game. As you can see, it has an infinity symbol, which means it's always in play, and down below it says that Robin's ranged strikes do not weaken for the first four spaces instead of the normal two. Also, when Robin places tokens out on the map with a gadget, he may place them up to one extra space away. So let's have Robin perform a ranged attack against this crusher, and as you can see, there is nothing blocking the line of sight from the center of each of those squares. Well, the first thing to do is to look at the Crusher's abilities, and it says that they will roll four dice in defense, and whenever they are defending, double hits on those dice count as blocks. This means that Crusher is going to be pretty hard to take down, considering they also have eight health. Now, with all of that in mind, I think let's have Robin do a really powerful ranged attack. They will go one, two, three, four, five, six. With that six power, they will add one from their natural attack, which means they now are doing a ranged attack with seven battle dice. Well, I hope this goes well for us, and it appears that we picked up one, two, three, four, five, six hits overall. Now, if Robin wants to, they can spend a single focus to get one reroll, and I think let's do it. This is already looking to be a pretty great attack, so let's reroll both of these dice to hope to get hits with them. Now, in this case, that got really good. Every single die has hits, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage coming in towards this crusher. Now, obviously, that would be enough to knock them out, but they now get to roll four defense dice. So let's see how they do. And it looks like they got two blocks, and then remember the Crusher also blocks with the double hits. So that means they have three blocks out of these four dice, and the villain player decides they are not going to spend a focus to reroll. So that means we are doing nine damage, and they block for three, so Robin is going to do six damage total to that Crusher. So let's track that by taking six of these wounds, and we will just stack it right underneath that figure. Well, at this point, Robin has just one action left, and it is a move action, and that's going to give them four movement points. Now, I think with this, let's just have Robin go two spaces over here. Uh, that way, they are adjacent to one Crusher, but not the other. Now, Robin is a pretty good hero to have at the front lines, because they are going to be having this Circus upbringing skill active all game long. It says that when they defend, Robin counts double hits as blocks, just like the Crushers do. So, I think that's going to finish out their move action. This means Robin is done with their turn, and now the villain player can go. So they're going to take a look at their hand of cards, and they have decided to play Smash. Now this is going to activate the Crusher again, just like their previous turn, and if we look down below, it says that for this turn, it takes two blocks to cancel each hit from the Crusher. So that is definitely not the kind of thing that we want to see. Now down here, it says that the villain player can activate one Crusher, and they are simply going to do it with three melee hit actions. So this will, of course, slide their previous card down, and now they are going to activate one of their crushers. Well, considering one of these crushers is adjacent to heroes and the other one isn't, the villain player decides that this is the one to activate because, of course, that smash card does not give the crushers any movement. Now, they have to consider, do they want to hit Robin or Batman? Batman does have a little bit less health overall, but currently Batman has a defense of five compared to the defense of three for Robin. Now, Robin does block with double hits, but even so, the Crusher decides to attack him. This means it will roll two battle dice for the base two attack, and then, of course, the smash card gives them three more melee attack power, which means they will roll three more dice in addition to that. So let's see how it goes. Now, right off the bat, that is a pretty decent roll. That is four damage overall and then one block. 
Now, the villain player could spend one of their focus to do a reroll, but they have decided they are going to save it. So this means Robin has four damage coming in, but remember, due to this smash attack, they need two blocks for each damage that they want to defend against. Now, as you can see, Robin has a defense of three because there are no defense icons on any of these dice or tokens. So let's see how he does, and that looks to be just one block. Now, they need another block to stop any damage coming in at this point, and if they don't block anything, they will take four damage, which is a full quarter of their overall health. Now, remember, they do get the chance to heal up whenever they roll bat symbols, which might happen on future turns, and I'm not sure if it makes sense for them to spend one of their focus to reroll these. Uh, there is a chance they just completely miss, and in a best possible scenario, they would get one block, which would just stop one damage. So do we risk a focus to potentially stop one damage? I don't think so. I think there's better times to use focus. So this means, unfortunately, Robin is going to take all four of that damage, so that's going to get rid of this three. And then they can flip this one over and add a 1. So at this point, it looks like they are down to 8 health after that massive attack. Well, at this point, Robin could go on the defensive, and I think we should probably do that. Remember, that happens once a hero takes at least 1 damage, and they can set any of their dice to be a defense icon, and they will do that for the middle die right here. So that means they are now slightly more defended going on for the rest of this round. And it's now time for the villain to go again. Now, in this case, they can activate a single figure and do two actions with it. And in this case, they are going to activate this crusher and move once onto that spot. Then for the other action, they will do a single melee attack towards Robin, which means they roll one die plus the two for their base attack. So in this case, they have three hits. And the Scarecrow player decides they do not want to reroll for more hits. At this point, Robin can now defend, and they have an extra defense over here from this icon because they went on the defensive. So that means they will roll 3 plus 1 or 4 dice, and they do not need to hit 2 blocks to defend from this because the smash card that was activated earlier says it takes 2 blocks to cancel each hit from the Crusher, and I believe that specifically references the Crusher activated in the bottom left. So in this case, they have three hits coming in, and they're hoping to block those, and it looks like they got one block and a double hit. does count as a block for Robin because of their circus upbringing. This means they're currently taking one damage with those two blocks, and we could spend a focus in order to try and block the last one, but I think let's go ahead and hold on to it. So in this case, they are going to take a single damage. And now the villain player's turn is done. So they can draw a card from the top of their deck, and it's now time for another hero to activate. Well, our options are Batgirl and Jim Gordon, and I think let's activate Jim Gordon. Now, before we do any actions, it's now time to read the special text on Jim Gordon's character sheet. As you can see, Gordon's special ability is called a Police Commissioner, and it says that Gordon receives the GCPD Beat Cops skill card in addition to his other skill cards. Now that card is right over here, and you'll notice that Jim Gordon starts the game with four skills, so these are the four that they have, and then this Beat Cop card right here is in addition to those. Now down below, it says that Gordon is always accompanied by two Beat Cops under his command. They act during Gordon's turn, but do not use or benefit from Gordon's action dice. Instead, each Beat Cop receives two non-defense action icons of Gordon's choice. Each beat cop may also be assigned different action icons, and Gordon may spend focus to re-roll their rolls. And as you can see, it says the ranged strikes from beat cops that accompany Gordon don't weaken for the first three spaces and have the following attributes. One attack, two defense, three movement, and three life. So that means they can be knocked out, and it also means they are slightly better at ranged combat than most other characters, because normally the ranged penalty comes in after two spaces instead of their three. As you can see, Jim Gordon is right here next to the police car, and so are these two beat cops. Now, they're going to start off by activating this beat cop here, and remember, they get two non-defense actions. Now, for one action, they are going to move, and their card says that for each move action, they get three movement points. So they're going to go one, two, three, and then for their other action, they're going to do a ranged attack. Now that means they have an attack power of 1 from the action, and then their base attack rate is 1, so this will be a ranged attack of 2. And it looks like they have decided to target this weaker crusher over here. Now they do have line of sight between the center of their square and the crusher's square, and you can see that the crusher is 1, 2, 3 spaces away. Normally that means they would suffer 1 ranged penalty, but again, the beat cops only suffer those penalties after 3 instead of the normal 2. 
So that cop's going to roll two battle dice, and it looks like that went pretty well. We got three hits overall, and we could have Jim Gordon re-roll, but we definitely don't want to do that. Now at this point, the Crusher is going to try and defend itself, and it has a defense of four, and remember, every double hit on a battle die rolled counts as a block. So they're going to roll all four of these dice, and it appears, wow, they actually only got one block over here from that double hit. Now the uh, villain player could spend focus to re-roll if they wanted to, and they have decided to do that. Uh, the reason for this is because currently that beat cop is doing two damage, and the crusher has six wounds. So if they don't get more uh, blocks, then that crusher will get knocked out. So they're going to spend this focus, and they are, of course, going to reroll everything but that double hit over there. So in this case, they got two more double hits. Now that is great for the villain player, considering double hits count as blocks. So that is three blocks overall, and the beat cop was doing three damage, which means the crusher has defended all damage coming in. Well, that was disappointing, but not super unexpected. And now let's activate the other cop. Now in this case, we could have them shoot twice from here. Their range would be one, two, three, four over here, but that means they would lose one wound as a range penalty. So in this case, let's have them spend one action to go here, and now they don't suffer any penalties, but of course they roll one less battle dice than they would have if they hadn't moved. So they're going to roll two, and it appears they got three hits. Wow, these cops are pretty good. Now after that, the crusher is going to defend, and they get to roll four dice. And in this case, it appears they got a single block. Now, at this point, they are once again being threatened to be knocked out, and the villain player decides that they are going to spend another focus. They only have two focus left, so this means they have one left for this whole round. And remember, they do generate one focus each round, so maybe they are burning through this a little quickly, but they don't want that crusher to be knocked out at this point. So this die will get saved over there, and then they can reroll these dice, and it looks like they got one extra block. So that's going to work out pretty well for them. Uh, three damage is coming in, and they block two of it, so that means the Crusher takes one damage, which brings them up to seven, and that is one away from being knocked out. Well, both Beat Cops have activated, so now Jim Gordon can go, and I think he's going to start with a move. So that gives him three movement points, and with that, he's going to go one, two, three. Now at this point, he's going to do a ranged attack against this wounded Crusher. It just needs one damage to get knocked out. And when we look down here, Gordon has a base attack of 1. So they are going to use this to increase the battle dice up to 3. And they know the Crushers roll 4 of those defense dice. And they would really like to have this break through. However, if they do this and they don't do the damage, they could attack again with these two dice over here. But if this is a successful attack and they do the damage, they could then target the other Crusher. So they are going to split this up and do an attack with 1, 2, 3 dice. So let's see how he does, and that appears to be two damage. Now at this point, they could do a reroll, but I think they are not going to. Now after that, the Crusher can defend, and it's going to roll four dice. So in this case, it looks like it is blocking a single damage. So that means they currently have one damage coming in, and the villain does have one more focus. Now they are burning through this focus really quickly, and they know if they spend this and they succeed in blocking, then that means we would have to attack that crusher again instead of attacking the other crusher. But they've decided that maybe they should save this focus. So they are not going to do a reroll, which means Jim Gordon is doing one damage to the crusher. And that is enough to knock it out because there are now eight wounds on this figure. So that means it is going to be removed from the map. And now let's have Gordon attack the other Crusher. In this case, he's certainly going to use both of these ranged attacks. So that's one, two, three battle dice they get to roll. And we're hoping to do some damage here. Now in that case, it looks like they only got three damage. And they could do a reroll. And you know what? Jim Gordon does have a few of these. So he's going to spend one of these. And let's reroll this over here and hope to get a hit. Now in that case, oh man, looks like we did not. So that was maybe a bit of a waste. But either way, now the Crusher can defend with four dice. In this case, it looks like they got uh, just one block over there, and they could re-roll these other ones with this focus. It is still their last focus of the round, and they are going to do it. They're going to spend this right over here to re-roll all three of these dice, and they're hoping that's going to save a few damage on the Crusher. So in this case, it appears that they did get one extra block with that double hit. So overall, that is two blocks, and Gordon is doing three damage, so the Crusher takes one wound. Let's go ahead and put that right down here. And the final thing Gordon can do is move. So again, that's going to be three movement points for them. So we can come back out to the map. And it's important to note that characters cannot move through any other figures, but of course they can go through diagonals. 
Now that means that Jim Gordon can't really do a great amount of stuff over here. I don't think it makes sense to move to be right next to this crusher, but instead maybe let's just have him go one, two, three over there. Well, Gordon is done, so now the villain player can take a turn. In this case, they've decided to play a Scarecrow card. Now this is called the Scythe Slash, and it says down below that while active, Scarecrow may make melee strikes against enemy figures he can see that are up to two spaces away. Now, while active means this is going to be in effect for up to four overall rounds, which is certainly scary. Now, down below, it says they can activate Scarecrow with a single move action and then two double melee hits. This also lets them activate any one other figure for two actions. So, of course, this is all going to slide down. And then Scarecrow is going to move once. Up here, we can see that one move action gives them three movement points. And they've decided to go one, two spaces over here, and then with their Scythe Slash, they are going to do melee attacks against a target that's two spaces away, and they have decided to hit Robin, who has already taken the most damage out of any of the heroes. So we can see that Scarecrow has a base attack of one, and let's now look at their Master of Fear ability. It says that enemy figures affected by the Fear Toxin treat Scarecrow as if he is obscuring terrain. Now, obscuring terrain is the gray border terrain, and you can hit something that is one space into obscuring terrain. However, for every strike, it costs twice as many attack actions. Also, obscuring terrain will stop line of sight going through it, but again, the first space in there is something that can be hit. Now, that means that heroes affected by the fear toxin will have a much harder time doing damage to Scarecrow. Below that, it says, in addition, Scarecrow rolls plus one die when attacking or defending against enemy figures affected by any status condition. So none of this actually has an effect with this current attack, and they're going to roll one battle die for their base attack of one. In addition to that, they are going to add all four of these melee attacks. They could split this up if they wanted to, but they want to try and do a lot of damage to Robin. So that means they are rolling five battle dice. So we are hoping they don't get too many hits, and that appears to be four overall. Uh, that certainly could have been worse, so let's go ahead and track that over here. We'll just put two double hits down there, and now Robin can defend. Now they have a three here and a plus one there, so that means they are going to roll four dice in defense. And let's see how they do. Well, that is two blocks, ooh, and then a double hit counts as a block because Robin, of course, has a circus upbringing. So that means we are blocking three out of the four damage, and I think that's fine. Let's not spend any focus to reroll. So that means Robin is going to take a single damage. After taking that damage, Robin has now decided to go on the defensive. Remember, heroes can do this every time they take at least one wound, so they are going to select this die right here to turn into a defense icon, and since that was shared over here with Jim Gordon, that means the effect is also shared, even though Jim Gordon has already used this move action. So overall, that helps Robin defend themselves as well as Jim Gordon. Well, the villain player is now done activating Scarecrow, and now they can activate any other figure with two actions. Well, they figure they'll activate this Crusher, and it's going to target Robin with an attack of two melee strength. This means the Crusher rolls four dice total, and that is four hits. Uh, that is unfortunate, so now Robin can defend, and they have three, four, five defense total. So we can remember they have four hits coming in like this, and now they can roll five dice. So hopefully we can negate all of these, and they do have focus to do a reroll. So in this case, it looks like they got one block and two double hits, which count as blocks for Robin. So that means they currently have one damage coming in. Uh, I think let's go ahead and suffer that damage. It's okay. Let's save the focus for some other time when it's maybe more important. So in this case, they are going to flip this over and they can add this over here. So Robin is down to five from 12. And let's go ahead and have him go on the defensive again. So this is going to flip over there. And then, of course, that does mean that Batgirl loses out on that one movement, but they do gain one defense. And after talking through what they want to do, they are okay with that change. All right, the villain player is done with their actions. They can draw a card. And now the heroes can take their final action of the round, which is going to be Batgirl's activation. When we look down here, we can see that Batgirl has two ranged attack icons. She has one move icon, which will give her four movement points, and then a single melee attack. Now, the only way that she could even get in range to attack with melee would be to get over here on this crusher, and I don't think she can get over there with just four movement. That would be one, two, three, four, five spots away. So I think, unfortunately, Batgirl is going to be wasting this action. 
Now let's go ahead and have her start off with moving. And I think let's have her go one, two, three out of the four that she had available. Now after that, she has two of these ranged attacks. And I figure it probably makes the most sense to hit the Crusher. I know that we do need to knock out Scarecrow as well. But Scarecrow is one, two, three spaces away, which means she would suffer a range penalty of one less hit. So she'll use both of these ranged attacks on the Crusher and then add another one for her base attack. That means she is going to roll three battle dice total. So let's see how she does, and that is two hits and a block. Now I think let's have her spend one of her focus in order to reroll. And remember, Batgirl is brilliant, so that attribute lets her reroll as many times as she wants to. Of course, she does have to spend one focus each time. So in this case, she got another block. And that does only show up on one third of the faces. So let's spend another focus to try and get a hit out of this. Ooh, nice. In that case, we got two hits. So let's definitely stop there with four hits overall. After that, the Crusher can defend with four battle dice. And it looks like they got one block and no double hits, which are, of course, blocks for the Crusher. So they're only going to defend one of the wounds that's coming in. And it looks like the villain player does not have any more focus to reroll. So we did four damage and they blocked one. So that is a three damage ranged attack from Batgirl. Well, we can add that right underneath this one. So now the Crusher has four wounds taken and only four life left over. Okay, at this point, Batgirl has just one action left, and it is a melee attack, but she is not currently in ranged to use this. Now, she could use this action right here to do a special action. The ones that we want to do in this scenario involve inoculating the fear toxin out of bystanders as well as potentially other heroes. Uh, we could also try to rescue bystanders, which is something that we have to do to win. But in order to do that, you have to be adjacent to a bystander, which she obviously is not. So unfortunately, it looks like she is going to be wasting this action, and her turn is now over. This means it's time for our villain opponent to go. Well, after looking over their options, they've decided to play Take 5. Now it says down below that when played, the villain player can choose one villain figure, and that figure regains health equal to the hits rolled on three battle dice, and then the villain also regains one focus. After that, they can activate any one figure with three different actions. So, of course, these will all slide over. They can put this over here, and it looks like they are going to be trying to heal up that crusher. So they can roll three battle dice, and it looks like they got three hits. So that is going to heal up three damage on that crusher. This means the crusher has just one wound left over, so that completely negated the attack that Batgirl just did. Next up, they can activate any one figure with three different actions, and they contemplated activating Scarecrow because their Scythe Slash ability is still active, which lets them do melee attacks up to two spaces away. Now, in this case, they figure the Crusher probably makes more sense because the Crusher has a base attack of two compared to Scarecrow's base attack of one. So they're going to activate this Crusher right here and simply have it do three melee attacks at Robin. This means they will roll five battle dice, which is scary, but of course Robin does have three plus three or six defense. Now they are targeting Robin specifically because Robin only has five health, and remember our opponent wins if they knock out any one of the heroes, and Robin is currently the weakest even with all of this defense. So they're going to roll these five dice, and it looks like they got three hits overall. And it looks like the villain is not happy about that roll, so they are going to spend the focus that they just got from their take 5 ability in order to reroll these two dice here. And it looks like they got one more hit. So uh, overall, that could have been a lot worse for us. That's four damage coming into Robin, and now Robin can defend with six battle dice. So let's see how he does, and that appears to be two blocks, because of course these double hits count as blocks for him because of his circus upbringing. Now that is currently blocking 2 out of the 4 damage, which would be 2 damage still, and he only has 5. So I think let's definitely have Robin spend 1 focus to reroll all 4 of these, where I think we are pretty likely to hit at least 1 more block, and we only hit 1 more. That's a bummer, but either way, that's going to block 3 of the 4 damage coming in. So Robin is now down to 4 out of 12 health, so he took a real beating this round. Well, the villain player can finish their turn by drawing another card, and at this point we have finished out the phase 2 of this round because every hero has activated and the villain player has gone 4 times. This means we can move into the cleanup phase where we have end of round effects trigger, and the first one of these is the villain player simply regaining one focus. After that, the more important effect involves the fire in the bank safe getting bigger. So this one right over here is going to flip over into a flame. And remember, we lose if all six of these turn into fire. 
Now, fortunately, we had a pretty good turn overall. We are right at the door of the bank, so we definitely need to try and break in there and deal with this fire at some point soon. Well, the last thing we have to do is reset all of these dice over here, and then all of these bonus tokens can be put back into the supply. All right, it's time for round two, and we can begin with having all heroes roll their action dice. Now, before we do that, we can, of course, have Batman be prepared and set one of their dice for their middle position. Now, as you can see down here, they have quite a few good options, and I feel like ranged attacks are going to be less important for Batman than melee attacks this round. So I think let's have him set this melee plus defense for the middle die. After that, we can roll the rest of the dice. And now we can do rerolls. Now, I think we should have Robin spend their last token to roll these two dice. Having two defends is nice, but it does mean they aren't going to be taking many actions this round. So let's reroll these two right here, and they got two movement. Next up, I think let's have Jim Gordon spend one focus to reroll this single defend here, and they got a move. At this point, I think we are done with rerolls, so now Robin can activate their bat symbol. So that's going to give them a single focus, and then of course they can heal up to one battle die worth of hits. So they got one hit, so that's going to heal them up once, which will bring them back up to five. After that, Robin has to set this die to any of the other faces, and they're going to go with the double ranged attack. Next up, his Boy Wonder effect activates, and he has decided to add a ranged attack to this die right here. Next up, it's time to arrange our dice. Now, I think Robin is going to start by sending this triple ranged attack over there to help out Jim Gordon, which means he can take these three ranged attacks and put them right over there. Now, that means this move is here in the middle, and this other move is going to the left. So that means Batgirl is gaining a move, which we can put right over here. Next up, let's arrange Jim Gordon's dice, and I think let's have this ranged die go over there to not only add a ranged attack for Robin, but also give Robin an extra defense, which he certainly could use. So that will go over here, and that means that Jim Gordon is going to be sharing a move action with Batman. After that, we can arrange Batman, and they have a punch defense as well as a move. Now we can see that Batgirl is already wanting to do two melee attacks, so I think let's have this punch defense go over here to the right to help out Batgirl. And we can put that token over here, which means this move is going to go back over here to Gordon, who already had two move actions. Well, they now have a third one. And lastly, Batgirl can arrange these, and we could give Batman another move, but I think let's maybe give him two melee strikes instead. That seems like it goes well, considering they already have two melee attacks over there. So we'll put these down over there, and then let's have Batgirl assist Robin with yet another ranged attack, so they have quite a few of them over here, and I think we are now done arranging our dice. It's now time for the battle phase, and let's start with Jim Gordon. Now let's have them first do a ranged attack on that crusher. They have a base attack of one, plus this one for two, then three, four, five battle dice total that they can roll. And we're certainly hoping to do a lot of damage. Now in this case, it looks like we got five damage overall. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Let's not reroll any of this. Now after that, the crusher can roll four dice as a defense. And let's see how they do. And that appears to be two blocks. So that means they are currently taking three damage. Now the villain player could spend one of their focus tokens to reroll, but they've decided not to do that. This means the crusher has three damage coming over to them. But before they take that damage, the villain player plays a card from their hand. Now normally they only play cards during their turn, but you can see some say play from hand, and this is a dodge. So it says, after a villain figure has been hit for at least one damage, roll one battle die per damage it is taking, and then reduce the damage by one for every block or double hit on that roll. Now this is going to immediately go into their discard pile. And now they can roll three dice because they have three damage coming in. Well, let's see what the second chance to block damage looks like for them. And they got a single block and no double hits. So that means one of the three damage in. So that means one of the three damage coming in will be blocked. So the Crusher takes two damage, and we can flip this over to show that. And now Jim Gordon has decided to activate this police officer here. Now with it, they're going to use both actions as ranged attacks. So that means they get to roll three battle dice against this Crusher, and they don't suffer a penalty because it is three spaces away, and the police officers only suffer a ranged penalty after three. So let's see how they do, and that is three damage overall. 
All right, now the Crusher can defend with four dice. And it looks like they are going to block just one of that damage coming in. Now, if they wanted to, the villain player could spend their one focus to re-roll all three of these, and I think they are going to do that. This is their only focus, which means they're going into the rest of the round with not that many re-rolls, unless they, of course, get more focus. So in this case, they will re-roll all three of these, and they got one more block. So they're going to block two out of the three damage, which means the Enforcer takes one damage, and they are now up to four. Now, after that, this police officer is going to activate, and right now it is one, two, three range away from the Crusher, so it's going to do the same thing and roll three battle dice. Well, let's see how it does, and that is four damage. Wow, that's great. So now the Crusher can defend with four dice, and it looks like they got two blocks, and they don't have any more focus to reroll. So that means two damage will get through, which means the Crusher is now up to six wounds total. Now, of course, remember, they were able to block always with the double hits. That's just part of the Crusher's abilities, which is why those dice counted as blocks. So at this point, it looks like Jim Gordon is done activating these police officers. And now Jim is going to move. Now, they have three of these move icons, and each one gives them three movement actions. And they've decided to use all three of these to gain nine movement actions. Now, I don't think they necessarily needed all of those because they are going to use the first action to go in here. And from this point, they want to move on to this spot. So that's going to cost them a second move action, which means they have seven left over. But remember, they also have to suffer breakaway penalties. Now, that's going to be one for Scarecrow and two for the Crusher because of their huge henchman ability. So all told, that is three breakaway penalties and they've moved twice. So they have used five out of their nine movement. Now, at this point, for a free action, they have decided to pick up this fire extinguisher right here, and that is simply going to go onto their player board. And you can pick up an item if it is adjacent to you or on your same spot. Now, they do technically have four movement left, but Jim Gordon has decided to stay here because now they are going to use the skill Covering Fire. Now, that is going to cost them their single focus token, and it says that while this card is active, all friendly figures within two spaces of Gordon, including Gordon, gain a defense of one. Now, as you can see from this spot, it looks like Robin and Batman are within two, so that is going to help them defend themselves as well as both of these other heroes. If they kept moving, then that defense bonus would only end up affecting himself. Now, this is going to be in play until Jim Gordon takes their next turn, so it's possible we might activate him later on in the next round so that this effect can be active for as long as possible. All right, Jim Gordon is done, so now the villain player can go, which means they can play a single card from their hand. And they've decided to go with Uppercut. Now this is going to go onto the row, which will slide that other one off. And if we look at the details, it says this turn, the Enforcer may only make a single melee strike, but may move one space for free before attacking. It also says that when played, the villain player regains one focus, so they will get this right now. Now down below it says they get to activate one Enforcer, and it is going to do three melee attacks, and then they can activate another figure, which can do two of any type of action. So they've decided to activate this Enforcer right here, and it's going to take that free move to head onto this spot, and then it will do that three melee attack uppercut onto Jim Gordon. Now we can see that the Enforcers have a base attack of one, so that means they are rolling four battle dice. And down below, for their Ready for Action ability, it says that when an Enforcer makes a melee strike, double hits count as triple hits for them. So we are certainly hoping not to see any of those double hits, and thankfully it looks like they didn't get any. That is three damage overall, and the opponent can re-roll if they wanted to, oops, but they've decided not to. So in this case, that is three damage coming into Jim Gordon, and he currently has two defense naturally, plus one from this die up here, and then also another one from this cover fire. So that is going to be four defense dice total. And it looks like he is able to block none of the damage coming in. Wow, and uh, he doesn't have any focus because we spent it to play cover fire. So unfortunately, that means Jim Gordon is going to end up taking three damage. That is certainly not great, considering he only started with 10 life, so he is now down to 7. Well, Jim Gordon did just take a damage, so I think let's go ahead and have him go on the defensive by flipping that die up there. At this point, the Enforcer is done, so now any other figure can activate, and they're going to go with their Crusher. Unfortunately, we're not too surprised to see it attack Robin, and it has a base attack of 2, plus the 2 actions will be both melee actions. 
So that means it is going to roll four battle dice against Robin, who currently has a defense of three plus one plus another one from cover fire. So that's a defense of five. So let's see how this goes. And that is just two damage overall. So that was a bit of a good break for us. Now, the villain player could spend their only focus to reroll, but they have decided to save it. So that two damage is coming in to Robin, and Robin has a defense of five from the three plus one plus one, so they can roll five dice. And in this case, they are able to block that damage. Awesome. Both of these are blocks, and double hits also would have been blocks. So thankfully, Robin does not take any damage here. Well, that's going to finish the villain player's turn, so now they can draw cards, and they have to draw two because they always go back up to their maximum hand size. All right, we can now have another hero activate, and I think it should be Batgirl. Now, let's have her start off with movement, and it looks like she has two movement actions available. Well, this first one is going to give her four movement points, and with these points, let's have her go one and then two. Now, at this point, she is in melee range to attack this crusher, and she can do that with one two, three, four battle dice, and the Crusher only has two health left. So hopefully she can take that Crusher out, and then we will only have to deal with Enforcers for the rest of this scenario. So let's see how she does, and that looks like five damage. Well, Batgirl has three focus that she could spend, but obviously we are not going to be rerolling that. So the Crusher now has to defend itself, and it's going to do that with four dice. It has five damage coming in, and it looks like it is able to block one, two of it right now. Now, it did not get any of the double hits, which also counts as blocks for the Crusher. So right now, it has three damage coming in, and it only has two life. Now, the villain player can spend this to try and roll again, but they think their odds are not great to actually save the Crusher from being knocked out, so I think they are just going to let it happen. So that's three more damage, which brings the Crusher up to nine wounds, and that is definitely enough to knock the Crusher out. Now at this point, it is worth mentioning that Batgirl has an ongoing skill for this entire game called Bird of Prey. It says down here that each time Batgirl knocks down or knocks out an enemy figure, she regains life equal to the number of hits rolled on one battle die. Now, we don't actually have to do this right now because Batgirl has not taken any damage just yet, but going forward, once she does take damage, we are going to prioritize trying to let her be the one to do the final hit to knock out enemy figures. Well, at this point, Batgirl has a single ranged attack she can do, and she does also still have a move. So let's have her do the move first, because that will let her get farther away from Scarecrow, so that she is not adjacent to Scarecrow, so that we can do a ranged attack back. Of course, one of the things that we have to do in order to win this scenario is knock Scarecrow out at least once. And it is worth noting that once knocked out, uh, Scarecrow does have the ability to reawaken. But even if he is awake at the end of the round, as long as he was knocked out once, we are still going to win the scenario. As well, of course, as long as we have rescued all of the bystanders and put out the fire in the bank vault. Now, in this case, it looks like Batgirl gets four movement points. So she's going to go here for the first move, plus one for the breakaway penalty. So that is two of her four. And then with her second and third, she's going to go over here because, again, there is a breakaway penalty. Now, at this point, Batgirl is not adjacent to Scarecrow. So let's have her do a ranged attack of one plus one or two battle dice. So let's see how she does. Now, as you can see down here, Scarecrow has 12 health overall, so with this attack, we are just hoping to chip away. Now, that is 2 damage, which is a pretty good roll, I think, so now Scarecrow can defend themselves with a defense of 3. So, they will roll 3 dice, and it looks like they only got 1 block. Now, they could spend this to re-roll these other ones, but they're not that worried about taking 1 damage right now, so they'll just let it happen. So, they can flip this over to the 1, and then add another 1 over here, and Scarecrow obviously still has 11 health, and that has finished out this ranged attack. Overall, this was a great turn for Batgirl, uh, especially considering she did not spend any focus to reroll, and her ability lets her reroll multiple times. Now, I think before she finishes out her turn, she is going to turn on a skill. Now, this one is called Gymnastics, and it's going to cost one of her focus. And if we look down below, it says that while this card is active, Batgirl receives defend plus one. In addition to that, after each defense roll Batgirl makes, she may immediately move one space for free. Now, I think this is worth it overall because Batgirl is now in the middle of the fray in the bank and getting extra moves is nice. And also, plus one defense is certainly a good thing as well. So, Batgirl is now officially done with her turn. This means it's time for a villain turn. And they've decided to go with Gang Up. Now we can see down below that this is going to activate three enforcers, and each one gets a move as well as a single melee attack. 
Now they can also activate another figure with two actions, and it says that during this turn, enforcers receive plus one die in melee strikes if there's at least one other enforcer adjacent to their target. So this is going to head down here, and all of these can slide over. This right here will be the first enforcer to activate, and as you can see, they have a movement of two. So it's going to go one, two, and then attack Batgirl. Now, as we just said, the enforcers this round will get plus one die when there is another enforcer adjacent, and this one is adjacent to Batgirl. So they are ganging up, and their base attack is one, plus one for the uh, villain card that got played right over here, as you can see. So that is two plus one for the gang up bonus, which means this enforcer will roll three battle dice. Well, let's see how they do. Now, that is not great at all. Wow. So that's one damage, plus normally this would be two, but remember, enforcers have that ready for action ability, which makes double hits into triple hits. So this means it's currently doing four damage total. Next up, Batgirl has to defend herself, and she has a base defense of three, plus one for this face up here, and then another one from Gymnastics. Now, unfortunately, she is no longer under the protection of Cover Fire from Jim Gordon, because she is three spaces away instead of two. So she'll roll five battle dice total, and then she is able to block, wow, four of it. So that was looking really bad up till just a couple seconds ago. Uh, four damage was coming in, and four damage has been blocked. So she doesn't actually have to re-roll at all. So with that, she has fully defended this attack. And then, of course, her gymnastics comes into effect, because it gives her one free movement every time she does a defense roll. In this case, I think getting deeper into the bank is probably a good idea, so let's have Batgirl use gymnastics to head onto this spot here. Now at this point, the villain player has activated one out of three enforcers, and the next one they'll activate is here. Now it's going to move there and then stop, and then attack Batgirl for three dice again, because Batgirl is still adjacent to another enforcer, so the gang up benefit still comes into play. So let's see how they do, and that is going to be three damage overall. So not a bad attack, and now Batgirl can defend. Now we can see that she has three defense here, plus one over there, and one for gymnastics. And now, this time, the cover fire from Jim Gordon is going to come into effect because she used her gymnastics to get within two spaces of him. So that means, all told, she actually gets to roll six dice. Now she's probably not going to block all three damage coming in, and it looks like only one damage was blocked with that roll. So I think let's definitely have Batgirl spend a focus to re-roll five of these dice. Hopefully we'll get a couple more blocks here, and it looks like we did. So that is two more blocks, which means we have three blocks total, which is going to block all three damage coming in. So that means Batgirl once again doesn't take damage, although she did lose a focus. At this point, Batgirl can once again use gymnastics because she did a defense roll. With this, I think let's have Batgirl head right over here so that she is still two spaces away from Jim Gordon to get that protective covering fire. Well, one more Enforcer can activate, and it's going to be this one over here, and it'll go one, two spaces over, and try to attack Batgirl again. Now, so far, she hasn't taken any damage because her defense is actually pretty great right now, but it looks like the villain player is going to still try to make this work. So they're going to roll three dice, and that is, wow, five damage, because remember, doubles are triples for the Enforcers. So it almost couldn't get better. I suppose three triples is the best thing that an Enforcer could do, but either way, that is five damage coming in. And now Batgirl gets to roll five defense dice, and she only got three blocks. So that means that is two damage coming in, and she could use this over here to reroll, but it looks like maybe we should just take the damage. She has quite a bit of health overall, so it's not that big of a deal. And she could use that damage to go on the defensive, which would increase her defense die rolls even better. So yeah, that's fine. Let's have Batgirl go ahead and take two damage. And then once again, she can perform gymnastics. Now in this case, I think maybe she can move over to that spot. She's still two spaces away from Jim Gordon to get the benefit from covering fire, and I think it's going to help free up some of our options. After that, let's have her go on the defensive, and let's do it with this die here. Now she is giving one ranged uh, attack over to Robin, but Robin only has five health, and we lose if any one of the heroes goes down to zero health. Uh, so it looks like the villain player probably would have preferred to hit Robin multiple times with the Enforcers, but this seemed like it was a better thing to go after Batgirl, even though they haven't actually done that much damage. But either way, this can now go on the defensive to that, which means Robin is going to gain a defense, which we can show by putting that token here. Now at this point, the villain player has done a lot of attacks so far, and they can now activate any one figure with two actions, and we're not too surprised to see them activate Scarecrow. Now they're going to have Scarecrow use the Scythe Slash, which lets them do a melee attack up to two spaces away, 
And with this, they are going to be attacking Robin that is two spaces away. Now, I suppose technically they could be just doing ranged attacks, but I think uh, having Scarecrow use a Scythe Slash is a little bit more thematically fun. So they will get two battle dice for the two actions, plus one for the base attack of Scarecrow. And let's see how bad this attack is. Now, that is actually pretty bad. That is four damage coming in. So now Robin has to defend, and they do not have any focus. Now we can see their defense is going to be three plus one plus another one and a third one because of cover fire. So that means they are going to roll six defense dice just like Batgirl did. So let's see that defense roll. Now there is four damage coming in and they are only blocking two of it right now, which is a problem considering they only have five health. So that means they are going to take two damage and things are looking a little precarious over here. Now, since Robin did take damage, I think he should go on the defensive, especially considering I don't think he needs these two move actions. So there's no reason for him to move the middle one when he could go on the defensive with the left one, which will gain a defense over here for Batgirl. We can add that over there, and now it looks like the villain's turn is done, so they can finish up by drawing a card, and it's time to activate a new hero. Well, considering Robin is in a scary spot, let's have him activate, and the first thing he will do is use this first aid kit gadget. Now these gadgets are one-time use things for the entire scenario, and it says that you can choose either yourself or a friendly adjacent figure, and roll two battle dice, the figure regains life equal to the number of hits rolled. So obviously Robin will target themselves, they'll roll these two dice, and they got two hits. Alright, that's going to heal up two health, which brings him back to five. Next up, let's have Robin do some ranged attacks, and it looks like his uh, base is one, plus this and these three, which means Robin can roll five dice here. And with this, he is going to target Scarecrow, who is just two spaces away. So it looks like he was able to do four damage total, and Robin does not have any focus to do rerolls. So that means Scarecrow can now defend themselves against that four damage, and they have a defense of three. So they're going to roll three dice here, and it looks like they did not get any blocks. Now, taking four damage is not something that they want to do right now. So they're going to spend their only focus to do a full reroll. In this case, it looks like they got two blocks. So now they are going to take two damage, which brings Scarecrow down to nine health. Next up, let's have Robin move, and he gets four movement points. And I think he should just back out of the fray a bit. So in this case, let's have him go one, two, three, four. And uh, it does seem a little silly running this far back, but remember, Robin does not suffer a range penalty uh, until after four spaces. So having him be back is a good idea, especially considering the opponent really wants to knock Robin out with uh, his only five health remaining. So with him back here, I'm feeling a little bit safer, and of course, he can continue to run back into the fray. Also, there is a terrain move that you can do where you spend two move actions to take cover behind a dumpster or a car. And when you're taking cover, no enemy can draw a line of sight on your character. This means we are well positioned to take cover if we need to in the future. Obviously, that's not going to happen this round. So overall, I think that is going to finish up Robin's turn. This means it's the villain player's turn. And they have decided to activate Scarecrow with the God of Fear effect. Now it says, when played, after Scarecrow moves, place a Fear Toxin token on all non-friendly figures within two spaces of him. Now we can see that Scarecrow is going to gain a defense for as long as this card is out here, so effectively one full round. Uh, Scarecrow is also, this round, going to get two melee attack actions and a move action. Also, they can activate any other figure with two wild actions. So that means that the Scythe Slash is gone, so now uh, Scarecrow does have to do melee attacks against adjacent enemies. And Scarecrow is going to start off with a move action, which gives them three movement points. In this case, Scarecrow really just wants to infect as many heroes as they can with the Fear Toxin. So they are going to go here for one move plus one breakaway penalty, and then they'll come right back over here. They have now finished their move, and it looks like all three of these heroes are within two spaces of the Scarecrow, so they will all gain the Fear Toxin. This means we can put this down onto Batman, Batgirl, as well as Jim Gordon over here. And whenever a player-controlled figure has the Fear Toxin, they move at one less per activation. They also defend at one less, and they attack at one less. And just to make matters even worse, we can see down here that enemy figures to Scarecrow uh, that are affected with a Fear Toxin treat Scarecrow as if he is obscuring terrain. 
Now, in that case, whenever you are targeting into obscuring terrain, you have to use twice as many attack symbols as normal. So this is a pretty big deal. We are definitely going to have to inoculate our heroes of this fear. Now it says, uh, on top of all of that, Scarecrow also rolls plus one die when attacking or defending against enemy figures affected by this status condition. So that fear toxin is a pretty big problem for us. Next up, the Scarecrow is going to do a melee attack on Jim Gordon with this two strength here plus one from their base strength, which means they are going to roll three dice. But Jim Gordon is also infected with the fear toxin, so that means Scarecrow will roll yet another die. So that is four battle dice against Jim Gordon. Unfortunately for us, Jim Gordon only has 7 health, so we can see here that Scarecrow did 4 damage. So I guess overall that could have been worse, and now Jim Gordon needs to defend. Well, we can see that Jim Gordon has a defense of 2, plus 2, or 4, plus another one from Covering Fire, which gets him to 5, but then minus 1 for this Fear Toxin. So that means he's only going to roll these 4 dice to try and defend the 4 damage coming in. Well, let's see how he does, and that is two blocks, so that means Jim Gordon's only going to take two damage total. Well, this certainly isn't great. He's now down to five health, and now let's have him go on the defensive, so that means he can flip one of these over to a defense side, and it actually has to be this over here. So that means Batman is going to lose out on one move, but I think this is still going to be important. So let's come over here and replace the move share bonus with a defense. Next up, the villain can activate any one figure with two die activations, and they're going to use them both as melee when they activate this Enforcer, who is going to do a single melee attack against Jim Gordon. So that Enforcer adds two battle dice to their base one, and it looks like they have done just two damage. So that is pretty good, and the opponent does not have the ability to reroll because they don't have any focus. So now Jim Gordon can defend. They have, it looks like, uh, two, three, four, five, six, minus one, or five, so they can roll five battle dice to try and defend two incoming damage. So let's see how he does, and we made it. All right, so that means Jim Gordon fortunately does not take any damage from this attack. The villain player is now done with their turn, so they can draw a card, and it's now time for us to activate our final hero, which is Batman. Well, it looks like Batman has a single move action, which will give three movement points, and then he has one, two, three, four melee attacks. Unfortunately, he is also affected by this fear toxin, and players cannot actually inoculate themselves. They have to inoculate other uh, heroes. Now, again, the inoculate action is a special action, and that means you can only do it if you are not adjacent to any enemies. And as you can see, there are a ton of enemies still out here on the board. So with that in mind, let's have Batman start with a move that gives him three movement points. And with these, I think he should simply go here and then stop. If he wants to move again, he actually can't because there is a breakaway penalty of two with these two adjacent enemies. And now let's have Batman attack this Enforcer. Now the reason we're attacking the Enforcer and not Scarecrow is because Scarecrow is effectively obscured terrain to Batman because Batman is affected by the Fear Toxin. Now that means Batman would have to use twice as many of the attack symbols to try and attack Scarecrow. So for now, it probably makes sense to try and work on some of the minions to clear out the space to allow us the ability to inoculate ourselves as well as these bystanders. And then all along, maybe trying to continue to chip away at Scarecrow. In particular, right now, Robin is not affected by the fear toxin. So maybe we will try to just shoot Scarecrow from afar with Robin. Um, either way, let's now have Batman attack this enforcer. And they're going to do it with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, or 5 battle dice. So let's see how Batman does, and that looks like 1, 2, 3 hits. Now that's not great, but Batman does have 3 focus. So let's spend 1 of those focus in order to reroll all 3 of these misses. Well, that got a lot better. <laughs> it looks like we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hits total. And remember, these enforcers only have 4 health. Now we can see they also have a defense of three, and they don't currently get any bonuses from the villain cards that have been played. So seven damage coming in is great. They are going to roll three defense, and hopefully they cannot block enough so that we actually just knock them out. In this case, they did not get any blocks, but if they were all blocks, that would still be seven minus three or four. So this was a great attack by Batman, which will knock out that Enforcer. So that Enforcer is gone, and I think Batman is actually done with all of their actions. Now, it is worth noting that he does have an array of gadgets right here. Uh, the battering and the throwing blade both have to do with ranged strikes, so obviously not something they're doing this turn. 
on this first aid kit. They might save, I think, for Gordon, actually, considering Batman currently has a lot of health. And they do have a gas mask. Now, it looks like Robin also has a gas mask on their utility belt. And we can see that this says that until their next turn, the hero receives the immune attribute. Now, when you are immune, you are not affected by any gases. And it's worth noting that Scarecrow is always immune over here. So I believe that means if Batman used this gas mask, then they would not be affected by the fear toxin until their next turn when they would take the gas mask off. Now, I think at the moment, it's not the end of the world for Batman to be affected by the fear toxin. Let's potentially use this for a future turn when we maybe want to do a bunch of damage to Scarecrow. Now, in addition to those gadgets, Batman does have some skills over here as well. Uh, Driven by the Past is a one-time use skill that lets him roll three battle dice to regenerate the uh, health equal to the number of hits and also regenerate focus. So that is great maybe later on. Uh, this Electric Knuckles is pretty cool. It says, while active, Batman's melee strikes stun in addition to dealing damage. Now, stunning means that character loses an action. You get rid of a stun by just using any one of your action dice or um, action uh, options on villain cards. So obviously stunning is good, uh, but it did not make sense in this turn. Now, the other thing that Batman has is a shielding cape. Now, this is going to cost an entire move uh, icon as well as one focus. And it says that while this card is active, Batman receives defend plus three. However, if they move, they lose that benefit. So I don't think any of these skills really make sense to be used on this turn, and that means Batman is done. So the villain player can go for the last time in this round. Well, it looks like they're going to play get the jump on him. Now it says that three of their enforcers can activate and they get a defense, which means that defense will be in play for the next four overall villain turns. That's certainly not good because it makes it harder to defeat those enforcers. And it says down here that the each enforcer gets one move and a single melee attack, plus any one figure gets two actions. Now it says while this is active, after any figure completes an action, you may discard this card from the queue to immediately have an enforcer perform two wild actions. So this is going to slide down right over here. And now three of their enforcers get a single move as well as a single melee attack. Well, the first one will be this Enforcer, which will do a single melee attack before it moves. Now it has a base attack of one, so it's going to roll two dice. So let's see how much damage it does. Now that's just one damage, which is definitely a good thing to see. And now it looks like Gordon is going to defend with one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one, or five dice. Now I think odds are pretty good that we get a block on one of these, and we did only get one block. So that means Gordon does not take any damage from this. And then that Enforcer will use its two movement points to go over here for the one move plus one breakaway penalty. After that, this Enforcer will move here and attack Gordon with two dice. Hopefully that Enforcer is equally ineffective and it looks like it's doing two damage. So now Jim Gordon is going to roll five dice to try and defend this two damage. And it looks like, wow, he got four blocks. So that worked out really well and Jim Gordon once again skates by without taking any damage. After that, one more Enforcer can go, and it has decided it's going to try and attack Batgirl. So that is going to be two dice, and they got two hits. So now Batgirl gets to defend, and it looks like she gets a defense for this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, minus one. So she's going to roll six dice. Actually, she rolls seven dice because she is still under the covering fire. So Batgirl is quite defended at this point. Well, seven dice to defend two damage means we should be okay overall. <laughs> oh my goodness, and I definitely spoke too soon. So that is zero blocks, and Batgirl does have a focus. So if she wants to, she could reroll all of these dice, and I really feel like we should get a hit at that point. Uh, or she could just absorb the two damage. She does have nine health at this point. You know, I feel like this focus might be more important later, so let's just take the two damage. And then she can go on the defensive. After all that, she did roll a defense roll, so that means she can use gymnastics. And with that, I think she's going to head over here. That means she's not actually adjacent to any enemies right now. So on the next round, she could potentially try to inoculate this bystander, as well as just try to rescue bystanders, which is also one of the things that we have to do in order to win this scenario. Next up, they can activate any one figure that has not activated in this villain's turn, and they are going to select Scarecrow. 
we're not too surprised to see Scarecrow target Gordon right here. Uh, Scarecrow has a base attack of one plus one because Jim Gordon is currently infected with a fear toxin. And then with those two uh, actions, they are going to select a melee icon with each. So that means they'll be rolling four dice total. So we can see the attack, and that is just three damage, which honestly could have been a lot worse from these four battle dice. Uh, Scarecrow does not have any focus to do rerolls, so now Jim Gordon has to defend. Well, we know they get a defense for this, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one. So they are going to roll five defense dice, and they are hoping to defend three damage. Now it looks like they defended two damage, so that's great. Uh, they are going to take one damage, though, so they are down to four health. All right, the villain's turn is done, so they can draw a card. And now the battle phase is done because all heroes have activated and the villain player has gone four times. Now this means it's time to clean up. So the villain player is going to gain a single focus and then the fire in the bank vault is going to grow. In this case, the villain thinks that smoke spot will turn into a flame. And now we have just two more turns to do something about this, while of course also trying to rescue these bystanders and also knocking out Scarecrow. So there is quite a bit for us to do still. All right, that round is over, so we can get rid of all of these sharing bonuses. And right after that, we can move on to rolling dice in the next round of the game. Well, as always, the first thing that Batman has to do is be prepared and set their middle die face. Now, I do like this defense plus this melee attack, but I think maybe we should set a double ranged attack so that we can potentially use our throwing blade or batarang in this round. All right, let's roll his other two dice. And then after that, Batgirl can roll her dice. And then Robin. And finally, Jim Gordon. Well, I'm very happy that the two heroes with the least health just rolled bat symbols. Uh, but before we activate any of those, we do have to see if anyone wants to reroll. At this point, the only heroes with focus tokens are Batgirl and Batman. And I think they have pretty good icons going on. So we're not going to do any rerolls. This means that Robin and Jim Gordon will each get a focus for their bat symbols, and also each one of them can roll a single battle die and heal up to the number of hits that they roll. So let's start with Robin, and it looks like they got two hits. That is great. Only a one in six chance of that happening. So that means they go up to seven health, and then Jim Gordon is going to get no hits. Dang, that's not good. After that, each one of these heroes can set their bat face to any face of their choice. And I think Jim Gordon is going to do a move icon so that he can run very far away and not get knocked out. And then over here for Robin, he is going to go with a double ranged attack. Next up, we can arrange our dice. And I think Batman certainly wants to move this double attack over to the left. So that means that Jim Gordon over here will get a double ranged attack. Now that means this move will go to the right, which is going to give Batgirl a single shared move action. Next up, let's have Robin keep this defense in the middle, and of course the Boy Wonder effect comes into play, and they are going to add a ranged attack on to, I think, this die right here, and then they can share it with Jim Gordon. So that means Jim Gordon gets a triple ranged attack there, and then Batgirl will get a double ranged attack. Next up, I think Batgirl should share a move action over here with Robin, and then I wonder if Batman needs two punches or a single range. I think the two punches is probably better. He will likely be adjacent to somebody. I guess currently he is next to Scarecrow. So yeah, let's share that one over, which means we can put these tokens down like that. And then lastly, I think Jim Gordon is going to share a double attack back over here to Robin, and that means a move will get shared over to Batman. So we can add these right over here, and at this point we can move into the battle phase, and I think we have to start with Jim Gordon just to get him out of the fray. Now that being said, before Jim Gordon runs out of the bank, we do know that he has the fire extinguisher, and we don't want that to go farther away from this fire in the bank vault. So that means we need to get that fire extinguisher to another hero. Now fortunately, we are allowed to drop items on the ground for free. Also, you can pass an item to an adjacent hero by doing a melee attack at them, and you just have to get one hit plus one more hit for each adjacent enemy figure. Now, in this case, there are no adjacent heroes, but fortunately, we also have the ability of throwing equipment to other heroes. Now, for this one, we are going to use range attacks, and you simply have to roll a number of hits equal to the distance between you and the target that you're trying to throw to. 
Now you also have to add one hit for each adjacent enemy to the hero that is catching, and fortunately right now Batgirl has no adjacent enemies. So that means we can see she is just one, two, three spaces away, which means Jim Gordon needs to do a ranged attack with three hits. Now we can see that they have plus one base attack, but this fear toxin reduces their attack by one, so that effectively negates that. Now up here, they have a lot of range options. They could use all of these together if they wanted to. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice to get three hits, which feels a little bit overkill. Now we do really want to make this happen. So let's roll five dice, which means they have to use these three here, plus uh, these two. And now we just hope that they get three hits and they got exactly three hits. So that worked out pretty well for us. So that means that Jim Gordon has successfully thrown this fire extinguisher which means it's left his hands, but there is one more thing to do, and that is to check to see if any enemy figures actually catch this item while it is in the air. Now, the way this works is any enemy figures that are crossed over with that item can then roll battle dice equal to the movement value of the catching figure, and if they roll any double hits, which is a one in six on each die, then they will successfully catch it and intercept that throw. Well, Batgirl's move attribute is four, so that means they are going to roll four dice. And hopefully they don't get any doubles, and it looks like we are in luck. So that's great. That means the fire extinguisher has successfully been thrown all the way over here, and Batgirl successfully caught it. Next up, it's time for Jim Gordon to run, and we can use both of these moves to get six movement points. Now we can see that things are pretty crowded over here. There are unfortunately three adjacent enemies, so that is a breakaway penalty of three. So this means that move right there takes four out of the six, and he is still adjacent to one enemy. So when he heads right over here, that is going to consume the final two movement points. So unfortunately, he did not get as far away as I had hoped. Next up, let's have Jim Gordon do a special action to inoculate Batman. Remember, you cannot have any adjacent enemies when you do special actions, and that is the case. Now, whenever you do a special action, it's just going to take a single die activation which for Jim Gordon, unfortunately, will be a double ranged attack, but they still feel like getting that fear toxin off of Batman is going to be worth it. Now, this is not a guarantee. What they now have to do is roll a single die, and if they get a hit, then the inoculation is successful. So they have a two-thirds chance of this working, and they did. This means Batman is no longer affected by the fear toxin. At this point, it's now time to activate Jim Gordon's beat cops. Now they're going to start with this one right here, and they have a movement of three, and they have decided to have this cop go one, two, three, and stop on this location. Now the beat cops each have three life total, and the reason he's sending this one right here is to block the enemies from being able to move through here and do melee attacks against Jim Gordon. Now, it would be unfortunate for sure if one of the beat cops gets uh, knocked out because of this, but we don't lose if a beat cop is knocked out, and we do lose if Jim Gordon is. Next up, this beat cop does have one more action, and they are going to do a ranged attack on that enforcer there. Now, they have a base attack of one, so that means they get to roll two battle dice, and it looks like they have got two hits, so that is pretty good. Now, the Enforcer gets three defense, plus one more because of this get the jump on him card that is currently out on the villain card row. So, unfortunately, they are going to roll four battle dice to try and defend against the two damage coming in. So, let's see how they do, and it looks like they did not get any blocks at all. Uh, now, the villain player does have a focus, which they could use to do a reroll here. Um, there's only two damage coming in, though, so that won't knock out the Enforcer. So, they're going to save this for now and let the two damage happen. We can show that by putting these right down here, and now the other beat cop can activate. In this case, it's going to move one, two, three spaces here. And I think let's have him try to target the same enforcer. It's one, two, three spaces away, and the beat cops don't suffer a range penalty until after three spaces. Once again, the cop rolls two dice, and it looks like, wow, this was an even better roll. That is three damage coming in to that enforcer, and the enforcer is going to roll four defense dice. So let's see how they do, and they got a single block. Now in this case, they still have two damage coming in, and the villain does have this one focus that they could use to try and save that enforcer. Now that does seem good, but they also have three other enforcers, so they've decided they're going to hold onto this for maybe a moment when it could potentially uh, change a reroll to knock out a hero instead of just trying to save an enforcer right now. So they are going to let this damage on, and that is going to be enough to knock out the Enforcer. Overall, I think that was some great teamwork done by these two beat cops here. 
Well, Jim Gordon is done with our activations, and let's have him use his one focus in order to activate Covering Fire once again. Uh, this is pretty great, especially considering it adds one defense to both of the bead cops that are currently blocking the enemies from rushing over and beating Jim Gordon up. Now, one of the reasons I considered not spending that focus is because Jim Gordon does have this always-on uh, tough old bird skill, and you can see it says that if Gordon would be reduced to zero life or less, you may spend one focus to restore him to one life. This does not work against effects that instantly knock out a hero. So this is a good thing to have in our back pocket, but it only works if we do have a focus token. However, I think that token is better used for this covering fire. All right, it's time for the villain player to go. And in this case, they're going to play You're Fired. Now it says that when this is played, they may select up to three cards from either their hand or their discard pile in any combination and remove those from the game. Now this is important because the villain player does have ways to shuffle their discard pile back into their main deck. Now in this case, they would like to get rid of this card from their hand and then they're going to look through their discard pile and they've taken out these two crusher cards, which isn't surprising considering there are no more crushers out on the field. Now the next thing that happens, if we look to this card here, is they will regain one focus and then activate a single figure with three wild actions. This means they now have two focus total, and now unfortunately they are going to activate Scarecrow, and they are going to use three ranged attacks for those wilds to try and take out Jim Gordon. Obviously Jim Gordon is just two spaces away. And then when we come down here, we can see that Jim Gordon is still affected by the Fear Toxin, so that means the Scarecrow will roll an extra die. Of course, one of these five dice is also their base attack. So let's see how they do, and it looks like they got four hits total. Now they could re-roll this to try and get another hit, and they've decided to go for it. So they will spend this right over here, and they are hoping for another hit, and they got a block. Okay. Well, that is a tiny bit of good luck for us. Four damage isn't great, but it certainly could have been worse. Now, if we look down here to Jim Gordon's defense, things are not looking that great, actually. He has two base defense over here, plus one from this covering fire, and that is it. Maybe we should have actually shared this defense over to him instead of that double range, but either way, it looks like he is only going to roll three defense dice to try and block four damage. So let's see how he does, and he did get two blocks, so that is four minus two or two damage. This means he is still alive. He is down to two life, though, which is very scary overall. And now let's certainly have him go on the defensive. So that means let's flip this over so he is a little bit safer going on, but just two health is certainly something that I'm not happy about. Well, the villain's turn is done, and they can draw two cards because, of course, they got rid of one from their hand, and now we can activate another hero. Considering Batman has a first aid kit over here and is currently adjacent to Jim Gordon, who is just about knocked out, let's certainly activate Batman. So that means we can begin this off by having Batman roll two battle dice, and he is going to heal Jim Gordon up to the amount of hits that he gets. So let's grab the dice. And it looks like he got three hits. All right, that is definitely what I wanted to see. Now things are still a little scary, but thankfully Jim Gordon is back up to five health. Unfortunately, that was our last first aid kit of the scenario, so the only other way we are going to heal is by rolling these bat symbols. All right, let's now have Batman do some attacks, and we can start with some range attacks. Now, if we want to, we could use all of these together and do a range attack of six, but I think let's have him do two range attacks of four. Now, with these, he is going to be targeting enforcers. In particular, Batman is going to start by targeting that enforcer here. Now, it is just two spaces away, so he's not going to have any ranged penalties. So let's have him roll four battle dice, and it looks like he got three hits. So that could have been better for sure. And now the Enforcer gets three defense plus one from this card that's still on the card row. So let's remember that's three damage coming in. And after the defense roll, the Enforcer blocks none of it. Well, the villain player does have a focus token, and they are going to use it. That was a pretty bad defense roll right there. So that is still three damage coming in, and now they got one block. So overall, they are not happy with that use of that focus token. Uh, so it looks like the enforcer is going to take two damage total, which means they have just two health left. And now let's have Batman do the exact same thing again. So he will roll these four dice, and it looks like he got uh, three damage again. Okay, well, he is consistent. Now, next up, the Enforcer gets to defend for four, and this time they got two blocks. 
So that means they are just taking a single damage, and that is just one short of being able to take them out. So we can show this by just flipping this over to a three. Well, at this point, Batman has two move actions as well as a double melee punch, and I'm not sure how I feel about these moves. Now, I thought we'd kind of run in and punch something or punch something and run, but if Batman moves, then that would allow these enforcers the ability to run over here and start attacking Jim Gordon again, who is still pretty weak. He only has five health. Now, I think it's pretty important for us to defend Jim Gordon, which means I don't think we are going to be using these move actions. Now, we could use them for special actions. In particular, inoculating Jim Gordon would be great. However, we cannot do a special action if we are next to an enemy. So that means we cannot do it right now. Now, this does mean we could use a move to head over here and then inoculate and then move back over here. But that means we are saying no to a double punch, which is also really nice. Uh, we could use this at the moment to just do a attack over here on Scarecrow, who does still have nine health left. Now, I'm not sure which is more important, losing out on that attack or trying to get rid of the uh, fear toxin on Jim Gordon. Of course, more ranged attacks might come in, so I think let's do that. Uh, it's a little bit uh, safer, although it's not guaranteed that the inoculation will happen. So let's move. We'll have Batman head back here. Then we can use this double melee attack for a special action in order to inoculate Jim Gordon. And we now have a two-thirds chance that this works, so we are hoping that it does, and it does. Awesome. All right, the Fear Toxin can now be taken off of Jim Gordon. And at this point, only Batgirl is still affected by it. Well, Batman has one more move action left, so let's have him head right back into the spot to uh, continue to protect Jim Gordon. I think that is still worth it, especially when we consider the fact that Batgirl is in here uh, somewhat far away from most of the Enforcers and does also have the fire extinguisher, so hopefully she can run into there and start to put out this fire, as well as potentially rescue some bystanders. With Batman's turn done, the villain can go, and they have decided to play Regroup. Now it says right down here that they shuffle this card, the villain deck, and the villain discard pile together to make a new villain deck. Afterwards, they draw another card and play another card, plus they also regain a focus. So with this, they can put that over here, as well as all of these cards here. This will get shuffled up, and then they can draw one more card and then take another action. In this case, they are going to go with Clouded by Fear. Now, it says that when played, Scarecrow may place up to two adjacent smoke tokens onto the map up to three spaces away from Scarecrow. Now, it says that when this card is discarded, the smoke tokens will be removed, and this turn, Scarecrow gets two move actions as well as a double melee punch, and then any other two figures can get two actions. So that means these are all going to slide down. Well, they can put this up to three spaces away, but they've actually decided to put one underneath them and then one right next to them. Now, whenever you are on an obscured spot, you can move through it fine, but you cannot trace line of sight through it. Now, you can do line of sight into the first spot of obscured terrain, but you will have to use twice as many attack icons to do that attack. So that is uh, certainly a bit of a defense for Scarecrow here. And now they are going to attack Batman with that double melee action. So that means they will roll three dice total because Batman is no longer affected by the fear toxin. So let's see how many hits they get. Well, that is three total. And now Batman currently just has three defense. There is no other defense coming from any other bonuses. Oh, wait. No, this covering fire is still active. They are within two of Jim Gordon. So that means that is plus one defense. So they have three damage coming in and they can roll four defense dice. So in this case, they got a single defend, so they are going to take two damage, but they could, I suppose, spend a focus to reroll, but they have a lot of life right now. They would rather save their focus. So that means they are going to take two damage, and then they're going to go on the defensive with this die right here, and that is going to share over to Jim Gordon. So that turns into a defense, which is certainly nice to see. Next up, Scarecrow could do two movements, but they actually don't want to. They kind of like being in the fray here. They have quite a bit of health, and they are now obscured. So now they can activate two other figures for two actions each, and they have decided they will start with this uh, weakened Enforcer, and it is just going to move once over here, and then punch Batgirl. Now they have a base attack of one, plus one for this melee attack action, and it looks like they got two hits. So now Batgirl can defend. 
and it looks like she's getting plus one defense for this gymnastics, which is still in effect because it is up until her next turn. And that's uh, one, two, three, four, and that's it total. Uh, now, actually, she loses one defense because she is still affected by the fear toxin, so that will be three defense dice rolled. So let's see if she is able to block it, and she is not. Now, she does have a focus, but she is currently only taking two damage from this attack, so she's not too worried overall. She is just going to take the damage. Now, at this point, she could go on the defensive, but she has decided not to do that. Next up, they have one more figure to activate, and that will be this Enforcer. It's going to go 1, 2, right here into the Obscuring Terrain, and then it is going to do a ranged attack on Jim Gordon. So that means it has a base attack of 1, plus 1 more for this die. And let's see how much damage they are able to do. Now, remember, their double hits are triple hits, but that only is for the melee hits. This is a ranged attack, so that is just two damage, so I am feeling relatively good about this. We can now look over here, and Jim Gordon has one, two, three, four, five, six defense. And he just has to block two damage, and he only blocked one. That was uh, pretty unfortunate there. Uh, he does not have any focus, so that means he is going to take one damage. Now, if he wanted to, he could go on the defensive again but that would rob Robin of a double ranged attack. So I think we are going to risk it and not go on the defensive here. All right, the villain player can finish their turn by drawing a card, and it's now time for us to activate either Robin or Batgirl. I think in this case, let's go with Batgirl, and I just realized that she should have actually used gymnastics when that enforcer attacked her. Uh, she did do a defensive roll, so that should give her a free move, and she would have used that to jump up here onto the counter. So now let's have Batgirl do her turn. And I think instead of doing damage, let's have her focus on trying to rescue some bystanders, as well as try to put out this fire. Well, at this point, Batgirl does happen to not be adjacent to any enemies. She made great use of gymnastics over the last round. Now, in this case, I think she should use some special actions to rescue them. We do have to rescue all five of them, although these two over here must be inoculated from the fear toxin before they can be rescued, because they are effectively under the influence of the villain. Now, in order to rescue a bystander, you just do a special action, and you don't have to roll dice or anything. They are simply rescued. So I think let's have her spend this one, this one, as well as, it doesn't matter between these, that one over there. So that can be three special actions, and just like that, she has rescued three out of the five bystanders. So we just have two more to do, and now I think Batgirl should focus on the fire that is raging over there in the bank vault. So let's have her move, which will give her four movement points, and she just needs one, two, three in order to walk here into the bank vault. Now you are allowed to walk into and over these obscuring terrain spots, that is fine, and now since she is adjacent to fire, she can effectively attack the fire with her fire extinguisher. So we can come down here, and she just has one die activation left, which has two melee attacks. Now when you try to fight the fire, you can combine melee and range icons, and you simply roll an attack with those battle dice, and if you get at least three hits, then you have put out that section of fire. So she is going to use this fire extinguisher, and then roll three battle dice, because of course she has a natural one right here, and I don't believe the fear toxin affects this special fire extinguisher action. So let's see if this is good enough, and that is indeed three damage. All right, so that means she can extinguish either one of these two flames, and she will go with that one there. So just like that, we have started to push back the clock of the fire over here in the vault. Well, Batgirl is done with her turn, so now the villain can go. And they've decided to play Uppercut. Now we've seen this one before. It is going to give the uh, villain player one focus, and then one of their enforcers can take a free move and then do a triple melee attack on one target. Now they can also activate one of their other figures with two wild actions. In this case, they aren't going to use the free attack, and they're simply going to have this enforcer do an uppercut attack on Batman. So that is going to be one die plus three more for the attack. And it looks like this is going to do a lot of damage. Wow. Uh, remember, each one of these doubles is a triple for the Enforcers. So that is seven damage coming in towards Batman. Now, this is certainly scary. We can see Batman has a defense of three, four, and then a fifth one from Covering Fire. 
So let's see how well he is able to defend 7 damage. Well, that is 2 defense, so he's taking 5 damage, and he currently has 9 health. So that is scary, and I certainly think we should spend one of these focus tokens in order to roll these and hope to hit some more blocks, and we did. Okay, this is still bad, but it could have been a lot worse. Uh, that is 4 blocks from the 7, so Batman is going to take 3 damage, which brings him down to 6. At this point, he can go on the defensive, and I don't see a reason not to, so this can flip over. And then the shared token over here with Batgirl will also refresh. Next up, the villain can activate any one other figure, and they're going to activate this Enforcer, which will move two spaces over here, and then they're going to attack Batgirl. Now, their base attack is one plus another one for their other action, but we can see that Batgirl is in this obscuring smoke, which means the uh, Enforcer needs to use twice as many attack power to do this action. So that means instead of rolling two dice, they will just roll one, but they are still hoping to do some damage to Batgirl with this attack. So they're going to roll one die, and ooh, that's not good. Uh, that double actually turns into a triple with melee attacks for the enforcers. So unfortunately, that is three damage coming in from that one die. Now at this point, Batgirl can defend, and it looks like she has three plus one defense minus one because she is still affected by this fear toxin. So she can roll three defense dice, and she got two blocks. Well, uh, we can have her reroll this one with that focus token, but maybe we will save that for a time when we have a worse roll than this. So that means she is going to suffer one damage, and then I figure let's have her go on the defensive. So we can turn this into a defense icon here, which means the shared icon with Batman will change over here as well. All right, the villain is done with their turn, so they can draw a card, and it's finally time for Robin to take their activation this round. Well, we can see down here that Robin's turn is going to be pretty straightforward. He has a single move, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these ranged attack icons. So let's have him start off by moving, and that's going to give him four movement points. And realistically, I think what we have to do with him is try to get some damage in on Scarecrow. Obviously, there are two smoke bombs right over here, which means Robin cannot trace a line of sight through that smoke, but he can target into it. So let's have him go one, two, three, I think. And now it looks like he is one, two, three spaces away from the Scarecrow. Now that's fine because he does not suffer a range penalty until more than four spaces. So now let's have him do this ranged attack. Well, he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 attack power coming in, but instead of rolling a dice, he's only going to roll 4 because the Scarecrow is in that smoke bomb, which is obscuring terrain. That means you have to use twice as many attacks to actually target something in that obscuring terrain. So unfortunately, this could have been an attack that just knocked out the Scarecrow, but now it's going to be a 4 dice attack, which will likely just do some damage to the Scarecrow. So he can roll the 4 attack die, and it looks like he got 4 hits overall. Now at this point, Robin does have one focus, so I think let's have him use this to reroll that. Uh, maybe we'll get one or two hits, that'd be amazing, and it looks like we got one hit. All right, that is five hits overall, and now we can see that the Scarecrow has a defense of three. So they can roll three dice in defense, and it looks like they got one block, and they are going to spend a focus in order to reroll these, and in this case, they got one more block. So that means Robin does five damage minus two, or three damage total. So, Scarecrow will go down to 6 out of their 12 health. Well, at this point, Robin is done with their actions, but before their turn is officially done, the villain player is going to activate Get the Jump on him. Down below, it says that while active, after any figure completes an action, you may discard this card from the queue in order to immediately activate any Enforcer with two wild actions. So, the villain player is going to do this on Robin's turn. Well, we are not too surprised to see them activate this Enforcer, and they could use both of those wild actions for melee attacks, which means they would roll three dice, but Batgirl is still in the smoke, which means they would half this, and then just roll, I believe, one die. I think it's going to round in that favor. So instead, they're going to use one of the wild actions for a move, and they are going to head over here into the smoke themselves, which will help them defend themselves against potentially Batgirl, and now they are going to attack Batgirl with one die plus another one for the other wild, and then they have it because, of course, their target is here in the obscuring terrain. So they attack with one die, and they got one hit. So at this point, we can see that Batgirl is going to roll three plus two minus one, or four defense dice, so we should be able to block this. And let's see how she does. Well, that is two blocks, so yeah, that worked out pretty well. Uh, maybe the villain player should have used that to try and attack Batman instead. But either way, uh, that is going to finish out that activation.
Well, it's now the villain player's turn, so they can play one of the cards in their hand. And they have decided to go with Fear Dart. Now, this is going to get slotted in right over there. And it says that during this turn, in addition to dealing damage, Scarecrow's next range strike gives the target a Fear Toxin token if it hits. Now, we can see that Scarecrow gets a move and then four ranged attack power. And they can also activate any two other figures with two wild actions. Well, unfortunately, they are going to start with Scarecrow attacking Jim Gordon right over there. Now, this has a ranged attack of four, plus one for the base attack of Scarecrow. So that is going to be five dice rolled. And unfortunately, Jim Gordon only has four life. So let's see how that attack goes, and that does not look very good for us. That's one, two, three, four, five, six hits overall. Uh, now, the Scarecrow does have a focus to reroll, but they like the look of this. So that is six damage coming in, and now we can see that Jim Gordon's defense is going to be one for covering fire, then uh, two, three, four, five, six. So Jim Gordon can roll six dice. So let's see how he does, and wow, that was a good roll. Uh, that is four blocks from the six damage coming in, and Jim Gordon does not have any rerolls. So that means he is going to take two damage, so that's going to flip this over. And unfortunately, since this was a fear dart action, Jim Gordon is once again going to be affected by the fear toxin. So we can add that right over here, and now let's have him go on the defensive by flipping this over there, because of course he did just take a damage. Next up, the villain can activate two figures with two wild actions each, and they are going to start by activating this enforcer, and they are going to use the wild actions to do two ranged attacks on Jim Gordon. So Jim Gordon is two spaces away, as you can see, so there is no ranged penalty. Of course, the enforcers have a base attack of one, so they are going to roll three dice, and they got three hits. Now, they would like this to be more. Uh, they can see that Jim Gordon is so close to being knocked out, so they are going to spend their one focus token in order to reroll this. They're hoping for more hits, and they did get one. So that is four damage coming in towards Jim Gordon. So let's count up their defense value. They have one for covering fire, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then they subtract one for the sphere toxin. So they are going to roll six dice to try and defend the four damage coming in. So Jim Gordon needs three or more blocks to not get knocked down, and he got two blocks. Now we can look down here, and he does not have any focus, so he cannot do any rerolls, and that means there is four damage coming in, two of it is blocked, and the other two are going to slip by and bring Jim Gordon down to zero. Now whenever a hero or villain leader loses all of their health, they get knocked down, which means we can put a knocked down token next to them and lay them down on their side. Now, figures are allowed to move through locations with knocked down uh, heroes and villain leaders, and you don't have to pay for a breakaway penalty when you leave a spot next to a knocked down hero or villain leader. At this point, let's come back to Jim Gordon's area, where I want to talk about this awaken icon and value underneath their health. Now, if the scenario allows it, then heroes and the villain leaders have the ability to try and wake back up from being knocked down. Now, the way this works is on their next turn, instead of taking a normal turn, they are going to make a die pool of battle dice. They will add dice for their base defense uh, over here, plus any of the defense icons on their dice and icons. After that, they will add two more dice for every adjacent non-knocked down hero, but then they are going to lose three dice for any adjacent non-knocked down villain leaders and lose one die for every adjacent villain minion. Once they make that die pool, they can roll all the battle dice and heal health up, and if they get to their awaken value, then they are going to become unknocked down, and they can take normal turns from that point on. If they don't, then on their next turn after that, they'll once again build that die pool and heal back up again, trying to get to that awaken threshold. Now, in this case, unfortunately, one of the ways we lose as the heroes is if any of the heroes get knocked down, and that did just happen. This means, unfortunately, we did just lose this scenario to the Scarecrow villain player. Now, I do want to mention that we also could have lost this scenario if every single one of the heroes was knocked out, and that applies to every single scenario in the game. Now, uh, over here, we can see that we were doing a good job working towards our victory conditions. We had Batgirl in the bank vault. She put out one of the four fire tokens. Of course, another one would have spawned, and she could have tried to put all of those out. And we got all but two of the bystanders rescued. Uh, these two would need to be inoculated. And we can also see that we got Scarecrow down to half their health. So we were doing a pretty good job overall. But unfortunately, sending Jim Gordon in there on the previous round to get hit a whole bunch ended up being our downfall. 
So the villains win, and that completes one full game of Batman the Animated Series Shadow of the Bat. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though it was not particularly close there at the end. I think that we made things a lot harder for ourselves by rushing in there, in particular with one of our weaker characters from a health perspective, which was Jim Gordon. Uh, Batman was definitely our toughest character, I think, overall, just through the amount of health that he had, uh, the amount of uh, defense that he can roll on his dice, and also the skills that Batman had were pretty darn good, and we did not do a great job of really utilizing most of the different player skills. Um, Batgirl's gymnastics we used to a great extent, I suppose, and Jim Gordon's covering fire was good, but Batman had some great skills, like he had um, some knuckles that you could use to punch, and every time you land a punch, it stuns an enemy. A stunned enemy has to lose an entire action to become unstunned, so that would have been big, and Batman also had a card to just throw away once in order to refresh all of his focus, and also um, roll some heals. So, I think realistically, we should have run in there with Batman to try and pick up that uh, fire extinguisher, but I was a little bit too focused on having Batman do damage versus versus doing support things like getting the fire extinguisher. So it was certainly a mistake to run Jim Gordon in there, but I don't know, it was kind of cool to have an opportunity to have to throw the fire extinguisher across the bank so that Batgirl could catch it um, and to have that work and then have her use gymnastics over into the bank vault in order to uh, start putting out the fire. Um, that was all very thematically cool, even though at that point, we were definitely starting to lose the game pretty quickly. Um, now, as far as the hero win conditions, we did uh, rescue three out of the five bystanders, but the other two that we did not rescue needed to be inoculated, which was a problem. And we did get Scarecrow down to 50% of uh, their health, and I think we could have probably maybe knocked Scarecrow out in the next round, uh, just based off of how much firepower Robin can have from a distance. But, you know, we didn't have that opportunity because, well, Jim Gordon just got a little bit too stuck and had a really hard time getting out. In fact, you know, a couple mistakes were made that I know about, and one of them involved um, Jim Gordon actually getting farther out than he probably should have in that final round. So I think even though we lost, we maybe should have lost even quicker if I'd played the game correctly. But honestly, I think this is all on me as a novice player to the game. Uh, I was just a little bit too excited to run on in there, and I think in future plays of this scenario, I would certainly be a little bit more cautious, um, make a bit of a wall with, you know, Batman, and then shoot over him with a lot of the range damage that we had and also try to put myself in a situation to better utilize the skills that we had because, yeah, some of them we used a few different times, like, you know, uh, Robin had the ability to block more often and also to shoot farther without having to lose out on some of that uh, range penalty, but other skills were just not used at all, and uh, there were a lot of gadgets that weren't used, so, yeah, I think um, us losing so quickly is definitely a reflection of my skill level in the game, not necessarily of the uh, balanced power level. I mean, it's possible that this scenario is just stacked up to be very difficult for the heroes. I'm not super sure, but I definitely did not do us any favors by just running in there with Jim Gordon. But at the end of the day, I think this video was successful at showing a wide variety of different mechanics of different uh, things that you can do, like throwing fire extinguishers across banks, um, and also just trying to manage the dice that you're sharing back and forth with the heroes. And of course, the villain player trying to manage their hand so that they can do the best they can with the uh, figures that they have where they are at. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.